Creed 3 stars Michael B. Jordan, Tessa Thompson, Jonathan Majors, uh, Wood Harris, and a host of others. It was uh, directed by Michael B. Jordan in his directorial debut and is the third installment of the Creed series. Ladies and gentlemen, I just freestyled off the head. Give me a round of applause, please. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I go by the name of the Black Abstract. If you're new to my channel, I urge you to like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Listen. Feeling real uh, fresh today. You know, I got my, my pink on um, to honor nothing. I just thought the outfit was dope. Anyway, uh, let's get into this movie. It was a lot of there was a lot of talk and speculation uh, due to the fact that Sylvester Stallone wasn't a part of this movie. Some people didn't know why. I've been reading comments. Oh, I'm not watching it if Sly uh, is not involved. Listen, if you say that, uh, I say to you, go screw yourself. Listen. Sylvester Stallone, we know, started this whole franchise, right? The the original franchise, the Rocky. He's been in pretty much every movie except it. Let Michael B. Jordan be great. This is his directorial debut. He's a young uh, African-American male who's worked his way up to get to this point. Show you some support. Like, just show some support. Just show it. If you don't like it or dislike it, that's another story. But at least, at the very least, just show your support. And especially uh, skin folk. Go support this movie. Go to the theaters. Don't bootleg it. Don't watch it. Go to the theaters. Make it a date night with your lady. Uh, you know, if you want to go with your friends as a group, go and support. You know, we can't just watch all superhero movies all the time. We had to watch some some movies that got a variety of subject matter uh, or just at the very least support uh, your people. Um, so with that being said. Sylvester Stallone didn't want to be a part of this. He didn't like the storyline and how it was going. He didn't want no parts. Um, I'll get about. I'll talk more about that later. But let's get into this. Uh, as a story, now I will warn you: this will contain spoilers because I don't know how to discuss it without uh, giving spoilers. So I'm giving you a warning now: this will contain spoilers. This is take it. This movie. Uh, starts off with a flashback of Adonis and Jonathan Major's character, whose name is Damon. Uh, as we see, it was actually Damon who was destined to be the uh, fighter. But due to unfortunate circumstances, he's incarcerated. And Michael G. B. Jordan decides to uh, carry that legacy on, as we know from the other creeds, how he got into uh, boxing. Um, with that being said, Damon gets released. And, uh, you know, Michael B. Jordan feels obligated and a little guilty uh, about what happened so he you know he feels obligated to help Damon what Harris character uh the coach tells him you know he doesn't he doesn't have to do it but he feels obligated um uh, we see that all along kind of Damon was kind of playing him in order to get his shot at the title to fight Michael B Jordan um or just get a title to get a title fight period against his uh, Michael B Jordan's prize fighter uh and he winds up winning uh with that being said he goes on a a spree, uh, uh, pretty much a, a promo, you know, kind of uh, dissing Adonis, and you know he 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 wins, he gets what he wanted because he's egging uh, Adonis on to fight him, and uh, you gotta you gotta realize uh, Adonis is retired at this point. He's three years removed from boxing. He had a big fight in Africa, which ended um, his 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 run, and he decides to uh, just kind of be. More so like Mayweather, just in an executive role. Uh, but we see that doesn't last too long, and Jonathan Major comes and disrupt everything. Uh, from the rip, man, Jonathan Majors has been on a run. Uh, this guy is a superstar, regardless of what Joe Button idiot ass says. Uh, and I'll, I'll do another video about that, about just all of the negativity Joe Button has been spewing towards uh, African-American males, and particularly ones who are doing better in life than him. Uh, he... He stars. Uh, you you empath you empathize you empathize with him, for one, uh, and also the young uh, Don, uh, the young Damien that plays uh, Major's character in the younger part. You, he does a great job as well. But you empathize with him because you know his life got ruined just just like that for something stupid. Um, and also, you see, you can see that he's off. You can see he's institutionalized. He something isn't where something isn't right up there, and it's that unbelievable and uncanny uh, knack that Majors has when it comes to these roles. He really embodies the role he played, and he did the same thing in Ant Man uh, for Kang. 
you kind of just you felt where he was coming from you know regardless of if it was right or wrong you just feel where he's coming from um i also think tessa thompson did an amazing job uh you know they got a daughter now who's deaf and you know just with the signing i'm actually in the process of learning acl or asl acl what what am i talking about asl uh so i you know i thought it was pretty dope um now i will say there were certain parts in here that i felt and believe that Sylvester Stallone should have been a part of one being and listen this is a spoiler like i told you uh adonis's mom passes away in the movie yes felicia felicia rashad's character uh they asked her she's gone she actually passed away in the movie and when they were bringing out the casket i just felt like rocky would have been there being as though uh you know apollo was how he got his start in boxing that's a moment he should have been there for if he couldn't do that i think they should have hold they should have held off on not killing their character off uh but i did what i get why they killed her off they needed some they needed to him hit a low point again to give him some redemption. It was a classic movie, uh, classic movie uh, subplot, and that's what they did. Uh, and that that was one of the gripes with this movie. It was predictable. You kind of get, you kind of understood what was going to happen and why it was going to happen. You know, even my, even my girl was saying, "Oh, uh, they did that because of this. Oh, they did this because of this. Oh, I get why they doing that." You know, when, when, when Drago, Drago hand gets hit, she's, oh, that's okay. I get how he's going to fight him now. It makes sense. So it was certain things like that. That was just kind of, uh, kind of predictable. Uh, the end of scene in the end scene with the boxing, I thought was pretty dope. Uh, I watched Tyrone Magnus's review and he said the dream, the dream sequence didn't do anything for him. Uh, it, it was a little cheesy kind of, but I get what they were trying to do. So I'm not going to knock it. Uh, I, from what I hear, Michael B. Jordan, this is his, he's the first director to use, uh, IMAX cameras for the fight scenes. So, uh, you could, you could definitely tell. And I thought it really paid off in the end. Um, at the end of the day, listen, go see the movie, go support. I thought it was, I thought it was good. I don't think it's a great movie. I think it's a good movie. Uh, out of five mics, cause I read everything with mics. I will give Creed three, a three and a half. Um, post your comments below. I would love to know what you guys think about the movie. And give me a thumbs up if you like my review. If not, you can kick rocks with tube socks. I really don't give a shit. No, I'm just kidding. Peace.